Welcome to the Sandwich Generation, where you and I are stuck in the middle between our kids and grandkids and our parents and our grandparents, and we're just trying to make it okay for everyone. Today, I want to talk about a subject that might not have occurred to you before, but age is truly just a number in the senior living world. Here's what I mean by age is just a number. Whenever I see people tour senior living, obviously in the before time, I'll see ladies that are 95 years old that'll walk in there on a cane and they'll say, why are there so many old people here? I don't want to live in a place where there's just walkers and wheelchairs everywhere. That's not for me. Well, that might be true even though she's 95 years old. And that's what I mean by age is just a number because in senior living, the way it tends to work is your health age. There are people in their 60s who are clinging to life with COPD and they're on oxygen and they can't leave their apartment and all sorts of things. And then there are people who are 60 who feel like they're just getting started in life. And that is how it is in senior living. You will have 95 year old ladies that are perfectly fine, but because they're 95, we're just a little paranoid that they might need a little oversight and maybe they could enjoy some help with meals occasionally. And so that person might be a person that's okay for independent living, even though their age is way up there in our mind. But another thing is that person that's 60 and has COPD and they're just so sick, you know, that person is probably going to need some serious assisted living because they need help with a lot of things. And that's really what you need to look for. When you're determining someone's health age, think about how often do they go to the hospital? How many medicines are they on? Do they have dementia? Now, Everybody gets dementia as they age. Let me just tell you. I mean, if you're in your 90s and you're not forgetful, I don't know what to say about that because that just rarely ever happens. But what does happen is you get people at all ages and stages coming in and whatever has gotten to them physically or mentally is what determines their health age, if you will. And so think about someone who was otherwise fine and now they've got cancer. Well, now they need help. And maybe that cancer recovery is going to take six months to a year. Assisted living is not a bad thing to think about in that scenario because they need that help. But let's say, like we all hope and pray they do, that they go into remission after that and things get better. You know, now someone is appropriate for independent living. And that's a scenario where a place like Parkwood comes in, a CCRC, we've talked about those before, the continuing care, because you can just so easily slide around between what you might need at what particular time. But if you have someone who is on a steady decline and that person is younger or older, doesn't matter. The decline is what we're looking at. How many times a day do they need to get their medicine? Can they do that themselves or do they need to make sure that someone helps them with that? Do they need help bathing and dressing? They need to go to assisted living for that. You know, if they only need the one thing, like we talked about before, you know, when you're on the fence between independent and assisted, they're really great, but they only need help with this one thing. Well, maybe they could do independent living with some care, but they might also be appropriate for assisted living. You have to look at it like that and not just the age. And especially if it's a younger person, you know, 55 is kind of the low threshold for when you can live in senior living, hence the name senior living. Um, but even still, we have people in their 50s who live in those scenarios. Maybe they got MS. Maybe they got the early onset type of dementia that comes on when you're younger. You know, things happen. Maybe they were in a horrible car wreck and now they can't drive. They can hardly walk, you know, but their brain is fine. 
you know, those things happen. And so they will find not only age mates in senior living, but they'll also find people who are like them mentally, who are like them physically, that they can have that relationship with. And it really helps them to understand they're not the only one that's like that. They're not the only person that needs help. And the whole name of the game with independent living and assisted living too is to let them be as independent as humanly possible. That is going to help them. It is a key to their success. Everyone knows it. And so we're here to help with all of that. So whenever you're looking for senior living, please think about what their age is, but mostly what their abilities are and where they would feel the most comfortable given what they need. It's a lot to process, I know. So if you have any questions, please give me a call. Reach out to me. My information is always in the description below. I'm happy to help no matter where you are. You don't even have to be coming to my community at Parkwood. You can go anywhere, but just call me. Let me help, okay? So I know it's a lot. Let's stop. Let's think it through. Give me a call.